Hey everybody, Ethan here with Standing Stone and we're going to start a brand new series all about formal retrieving work or the trained retrieve. I have five different dogs that are ready to start this process all at the same time. Now the cool thing about this is that pretty much every dog that goes through this process does it a little bit differently. They follow the same steps, they take a slightly different path. And I would categorize it as probably one of the biggest learning curves that we have when you're trying to take your bird dog or gun dog to the next level. It's just a little bit different with every dog and it takes some creative thinking. The more differences basically that we can put on screen for you to see what it looks like and how it looks and how we work through it, the easier it'll be as you work through your own dog at home. Now, to start off with, we have a table. A lot of times people ask, why a table? Do I have to have a table? The biggest thing is, this puts the dog at our working level, so it takes any pressure off of bending over to work with a dog for an extended period of time. The next is, it gives us this, we've got a cable guide up here, and this gives us a specific area that the dog is going to be working. This makes the whole process easier. The smaller steps that we take, the faster we're going to get there, and the easier it's going to be on both us and the dog. So, the table is beneficial. Now, if you can't make or have room or do anything, you can do this without a table. You just need to make some modifications as far as doing the steps on the ground and reach out to us. This would be a really good time to reach out maybe at patreon.com slash standingstonekennels. There we can be set up to help guide you individually and make those adjustments if you don't have access to specific things. We can creatively think with you. Now, specifics on the table, it would be, this table is 30 inches wide, but doesn't really need to be quite that wide. 24 is wide enough, but if you're between 24 and 30, you're going to be fine. And then the height is all dependent on the individual using the table. This table is perfect for me. It's almost a little bit tall for cat. So set the height of your table to hit you approximately below the waist, or if you have a really tall dog, you could make it lower. You want a comfortable working zone because you're gonna be working with the dog's mouth a fair amount, and then also with their feet. So find a zone that's comfortable, kind of between waist and mid chest. That would be the height of your table. The length is important. Basically, 16 feet is optimal. Over 16 feet, not necessary. Under 16 feet makes it difficult, and I'll show you a little bit of this as we get started, but. The eight foot table, you don't have enough room to really work. And if that's all you've got, it's okay. We can make do, but optimal would be 16 feet. Now, uh, last but not least, this table is made out of aluminum. Just make something out of wood. Um, you could even use a workbench or something that you already have. The cable is for um, safety and consistency. Keeps the dog on the table, prevents them from trying to escape. Um, in the beginning, we need to be really careful with that, but um, the cable is going to help guide up and down the table, so it's also important. So you've got a cable, you've got your table, it's at the right height or your counter. Um, and the last thing that I would say is stable. This isn't going anywhere, and that's going to make it easier on your dog to get comfortable. Now, the first things first, we're going to roll right into training. Uh, we're going to show you each dog's sessions and uh, approximately how long these sessions really should be. I have tricks. She's just over two. Most of the time we would start this process with dogs younger, but she's been a really strong natural retriever, just hasn't been necessary. Now we're getting ready to prep for advanced testing. She needs to have this done in order to continue. So step one with every dog, it's going to be put your dog on the table, try and lift them if at all possible on and off. That'll become important later. There's going to be some window where we have a little bit of a push. Push meaning asking something that they're not 100% comfortable with. Sometimes dogs will take it as an opportunity to escape if they know that they can get on and off the table. So we do our best to lift on and off. It kind of helps save any issues down the road. But when we get started, we're gonna help her to get comfortable. I have some food here. If you need extra special treats, go for that too. We're gonna see here, she's ready for some kibble. We're just gonna lay these out on the table and help her to walk with us. Good. Get something that they can eat quickly and move with you. I threw them really close there. And you can see she's pretty comfortable here, pretty relaxed. Like I said, different dogs. Hey, whoop, 
the five different dogs that we've got all have different personalities. Here. Good. Hey. Nice job. Couple treats. You want her to be able to eat them quickly and move. You've got a dog that's clipping up and down the table like this. Good dog. Yeah. Getting used to seeing things come out of your hand and then getting them off of the table. There you go. That was an extra special crunchy treat there. Good. Building a little separation. This will help down the road as well. Ultimately, this is what I would say. She is done with step number one. That is getting comfortable moving up and down the table. I'm gonna grab the next dogs and we'll work through each one of them on step one. Okay, so the next dog that we have here is Shock. This is typically how we're gonna pick them up and put them on the table, under her belly and her collar and help. Good, lift with your legs, not your back. Um, we'll clip her in here and Miss Shock is a year and a half. She's the perfect age to be rolling through this. Also an extremely strong natural retriever and basically scared of nothing. She said, I smell something, but I don't know where it is. Ho ho, found it. Another dog, really, really comfortable, excited to eat, happy to move up and down. If your dog gets this comfortable this quickly, you are gonna have no problems in this category. Couple treats at a time coming out here, extending distances, good. Building a little separation, but also be prepared for new dogs may try a little of this like oh i'll just jump off because i'm cool not realizing that they're attached to something so definitely don't ever leave your dog on the table unattended and make sure in the beginning stages that you don't give them too much girth if they're overly overly enthusiastic like this one more lap here good girl again extremely comfortable on the table done with step number one. Now, as we bring her off here, again, backwards off the table is going to help. You see how she's trying to almost cling to the table a little bit there? Um, that's gonna help us have her thinking from the beginning, I need to stay on this table um, the whole time. So it is an issue. Someone will see it and I want you to be prepared. Some dogs will try and jump off and we don't want that to happen. We're gonna move on to the next dog for step number one. All right, next on the list here, we've got Clay. Ooh, baby. He is just over a year old. He's one of the younger guys on this crew. And you can see straight away, a little less sure, a little less confident of himself. It's not that abnormal. Your dogs will probably look somewhere in the between zone of maybe Trix and Clay. What we're going to do here is show you kind of how to help him through this. Again, eating is a really good way. You can save even just utilizing a meal for something like this. And we're gonna try and encourage him to walk. Hey, good boy, good boy. There's one, winner, winner. You found a leftover from shock. Good job, come here, bud. You can see how he's gaining some confidence. His tail is still down, still a little tucked. That's not the end of the world, but you can see he's moving up and down the table well, excited to eat his dog food. <whistles> Key here being that we can build some confidence. Good, that tail's starting to relax a little bit. He's getting more comfortable following me. Good job, good job. There you go. A little wag out of the tail, I bet you caught that. Come on. Now we want dogs to be enthusiastic, but one of the things that we're going to have issues with, hey, right here. One of the things that we'll have issues with is shocks over enthusiasticness is going to pose some interesting challenges and we'll be able to show you how we work through those. Right here. Good, come on, come on. Just working through it. If you do a whole meal this way, that's fine. Just building confidence. There you go. There you go, there you go. Good job. There's two things that we need to gain with this. A dog that's comfortable moving on the table as well as a dog that's comfortable doing things away from us. And you can see why tossing treats up and down the table a little bit. It's to build separation here. Um, one thing that can happen that becomes a problem 
is reliance on the handler. We put so much work in close quarters here that dogs can become fairly reliant. And that is a good thing and a bad thing. Good boy. Good boy. Making lots of progress. I wouldn't say he's 100% confident and comfortable, and he may never actually get there 100%, but he's really good at moving up and down. He's happy to work with me. He's excited about eating his food. This is where we would categorize him as maybe one more session and then pretty much ready to move on to the next step. He will gain confidence as we go, but comfortable moving is important. Dogs that don't move will be difficult to work through, so you need a dog that's comfortable moving before you move on. We will grab the next dog for step number one. Nice job, bud. All right, we've got Legacy up here. Same song and dance. She is just over a year old. We're gonna try and encourage her. Good. Same thing here. You can see again, smidge and reserved to begin with. Not a bad thing, but already getting pretty comfortable moving and eating. Good. Now, if you will notice timing, these sessions are pretty short and that is the way that you need to keep them. The smaller steps that you take in dog training, the faster you're going to get there. This is not overly exciting. It's not fun hunting. It's not running and playing and romping. This is structured training. It's fairly boring and dogs can learn to resent this process if you overdo it. A lot of people get in here and hammer out 15, 20, 30 minute sessions and then dogs are like, I don't want to go do this table work anymore. It's no fun. So keep your sessions short. Uh, I would recommend that you set a timer for about five minutes and try and beat that in your sessions. You need to know where you're going. You need to be intentional, uh, intentional about the process. Right there. You can see already a smidgen more reliance out of her. She's struggling with this aspect of things. Good. Come on, come on, come on. Eat quickly, move on. We need to keep you moving. She's focused more on me than looking for the things on the table. So that's something that we'll end up struggling with her a little bit. All differences. Every dog's just a little difference in personality. Good girl, good girl. Separation here. Good. There you go, um, but comfortable, moving, drastically more reserved than shock, which is not a bad thing. I would take this little lady over just about any of them thus far. Good girl. Hey, 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 this we can work through. Good girl. I don't want that anymore. Nice, come on. All right, we're going to go ahead and end this session here. Probably do one more with her and then we'll move into the next step. Let me grab our last dog. Good. And last but not least, we have Doc. This is actually Legacy's brother. And so again, falling in the category of just over a year. So I would expect to see some similarities between these two. Good. Um, this is another one that get asked. See, that was way too big of an ask for me. I got overly confident. Good. Right here. Short, short pieces, Ethan. Now he's super focused on the table. That's not a bad thing. There you go. See, just a little reserved, getting comfortable moving. Opening up a little bit. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. There you go. That was exciting, right? We'll be able to use some rolling stuff to our advantage later. But keep your sessions short. Do not do multiple in a day thinking I'm gonna chip away at this and we're gonna make it work. You wanna do three to five sessions a week maximum. Keep them short. 
it will feel like you're not necessarily going to make as much progress, right? If some is good, more is better. Not always. <laughs> and specifically not, most of the time, we'll kind of hid there, didn't it? Specifically not in dog training. Hey, 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 hey. You see a little bit of lack of comfort turning around there. That's something he's got to learn. Gain some confidence in. Right there. Good job. Good job. Getting drastically better now. All right, you got her figured out. She didn't make it all the way there. Nice work, kid. Hey, hey. Good. <laughs> they disappear. Woo, there they are. Nice job. All right, that, I like it. All right, so finishing up here with step number one, we have uh, all of the dogs pretty dang comfortable moving up and down the table. If your dog looks like these guys, you're ready to rock and roll. I'm the guy with the pink gun. We will see you in the next video.